Hey guys, so um, today um, I want to talk about um, how much God loves you and um, how he wants you to change. That's basically the topic of this video. So first of all, um, it says in the Bible that God is love. It says in the Bible that um, God is holy and that God is perfect. Um, so those two things are very important. So for one, God is love. God is not a feeling. Uh, so therefore, a feeling is not love. God is love. So the second one is, is that God is also holy. So um, that's also important because um, because um, he is holy. He is um, perfect. He is um, of great honor and atonement. He is um, blameless. He is perfect. That's what holy means, um, if you didn't know. So, um, God is a really good God. He created the world that we live in. He created you, me, um, the solar system, the universe, the galaxies, um, everything that is amazing, he created. <laughs> um, even the human innovations, he gave them the materials, he gave them the mind to build it. He gave them the time to build it. And he gave them the strength and the honor and the intelligence to build it. And when we say that um, evolution is the way that the earth came about, we are saying to God, you cannot explain our universe. We are saying to God, you are unevidential. Because you see, um, Darwinism or evolution and um, God are two different horses. And they're riding in different directions. So I want to convict you. If you are a Christian, get out of the evolution cult. You see, it's a theory of evolution. It's definitely not proven, much less to, to be taken factually. Because although a lot of people claim to have a lot of evidence, truly I tell you, none of them have any evidence. All of it is lies embedded in truth. So it is truth, but they put lies into it. Because, you know, if I say... Ice cream is made of milk and also rocks. Uh, ice cream is made of milk, but it's not made of rocks. Um, so that's what it is with evolution. Someone can say, well, yes, there's this fossil of a bird-like dinosaur, but that means that he is a transitionary fossil. He's not a transitionary fossil. Um, he's rather a dinosaur that could glide. And um, could not fly. Could not fly by itself. Could only glide. Kind of like a flying squirrel. So that's just one example of why we should not believe that evolution is um, correct. Because the creation story of Genesis is true. Um, every word of it is divinely written, inspired word of God. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. God did create this world. And he loves every single thing in it. But you may recall that in the day of Noah... Um, there was a lot of sin. There was a lot of sin going around. There was people that were sinning all the time. There was people that were sinning in sexual immorality. There were people that wanted to sleep with men. Like, that's, like, pretty bad. Like, that's, like, that's just an abomination before the Lord. And, um, and, um, that's, that's just, it's blatant, um, defiling in God's eyes and of his perfect and integratable word. Because did it not say in Genesis that he created man and woman so they may be fruitful and multiply in the earth? Has it not said in First Timothy that neither the idolater nor the fornicator nor the abusers of themselves with men or any of those people will inherit the kingdom of God? Does it not say that? So I wanted to address that. I do believe that everything is a sin that is in the Bible. Not, I'm not politically correct. You can hate me as much as you want. I really do not care. I am not. I am nothing but a servant of the Lord's house. Because I know I have a mansion for me in heaven. And I know where I'm going when I die. But the question is, the true question is, do you? Because a lot of times we ask ourselves, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? A lot of people would give you some generic answers find happiness, pursue happiness, pursue a nice job, pursue a, um, I don't know, girlfriend, whatever. 
uh, pursue um, cars or anything or pursue happiness, pursue pleasure or anything like that. The problem with all these answers is that they're all worldly. You see, life is a temporary thing. We came into this life, but that means that we will also exit this life. Because you see, there's a realm outside of life, outside of the physical. Because um, you're thinking right now, and you're and I'm speaking right now. That is a blessing from God. I don't think you realize how much thinking and talking is a blessing um, from God. If you think about it, um, every single time that you talk, you're using your mind. And you're not just using your brain that fires little neurons. You see, the brain is not just neurons. We're not just electricity. We're not just electrical signals. I can tell my hand to move like this because God has blessed me with neurons that fire at the right time. But neurons cannot make me think. Neurons cannot make me speak. Neurons cannot make me feel. There's something above the physical. You have to understand that there is something way, way, way above any of us can comprehend. And it's called the soul and the spirit. You see, it says in Genesis, in chapter 3, that there was a fall of man, that the serpent was more crafty than any of the beasts of the field. The serpent is Satan, and we are um, offspring of Satan and not of God anymore. Because you see, Adam was a perfect human. He would have, he would have, um, if he had not eaten the fruit of good and not evil, um, he would have lived forever, and he would have been in great, and he would have been in perfect fellowship with God. But what happened was that he took the fruit, and we got sin, we got natural disaster, we got disease, we got pandemics, we got famine, we got um, thirst, we got hunger, we got all these things. Because you see, God wanted to make us eternally and fruitfully um, His. He wanted to make us in perfect fellowship with Him. Um, so basically. Um, God decided that he wanted to make someone, and he made us. So um, what happened was that the serpent, which was Lucifer, the devil, came down and said, Did God really say that you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree? You can see that he echoes the same thing when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And you see, we have enmity with God now, which means that we're enemies of God. And God does not hate us. He loves us very deeply. Um, and the problem is, is, um, is how are we ever going to get to heaven if God doesn't love us? Or, I mean, if God, um, cannot accept us because we were not here like we used to be. Because you see, in heaven, everything is holiest of holy. Everything is perfect. So the question is, how do we become perfect when we all lie, shield, steep? We all do things against the Bible. How are we ever going to get to heaven? Are we all going to be cast to hell because of what we do in our lives? Well, that is where God's love comes in. You see, God decided that it was best for us to um, not live a life of sin anymore. And he gave us one thing that changed everything. His name was Jesus Christ. He lived in, in um, well, he lived in Israel. He kind of moved all around um, during the 0 AD to 33 AD. Um, at least it is, at most historians think that is um, historically accurate. Um, and he was a man that was crucified. Those are stated facts. They're proven. You can, look, you can look. It's not a theory of Jesus. It is Jesus is a fact. Because you see we get a lot of facts and feelings confused sometimes. So um, Jesus came. He came and died for us because he was perfect. He was the perfect thing. So in the Old Testament, um, high priests would offer sacrifices to God to atone for the sins or for lying, cheating, and stealing the pe or for people. Um, and um, you see, Jesus was that sacrifice. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Um, and uh, the cool thing is that um, we can actually accept Jesus into our hearts so we can have Jesus within us and that's very important because if we have Jesus within us then we also have his sacrifice within us we have his death his resurrection and his eternal life within us so we can have all of Jesus but at the same time be in the world 
Now, you see, it's not that simple. <laughs> I think that you may understand um, that it's not just me accepting Jesus and going to heaven. That's not how it works. You see, when we accept Jesus, we want to live a righteous life. We want to live a life that is free of sin. Because, you see, um, a lot of times I get myself wrapped up following my feelings and following other things besides God. But, you see, you must be a disciple of God. You must deny all things for the purpose of Jesus Christ. Um, and you must give up everything, every single thing. Read the Bible. See what sins you are committing. And God will show you, I promise. And he wants to fix you. He wants to heal you. And he wants you to be a child of his, a servant of his, and a disciple. And let me tell you, the only way to live a full life is by living a life for Jesus Christ. So, if you um, want to live a life that is full of joy, um, happiness, and if you want to live a life that is full of um, just eternal love, then I would recommend you um, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus. Because I know how some people are. They don't think that they need Jesus. But let me tell you, um, do you know when you're going to die? I'm assuming not. If you do a um, good job, you basically uh, hack the system, the 5,000-year-old system or so of this world. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, good job. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys don't know when you're going, uh, just pray this simple prayer with me. And I promise you, one second. Um, I promise you that this life and the next will never be the same again. So here I have a Bible. Let us read a few verses of it. Here's what it says in Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to the words of my mouth. That's what it says in Psalm 54. And if we turn to Matthew, um, here's what it says. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, or who receives, the one who seeks, finds. Um, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks you for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more your Father in heaven give will give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything... Do to others uh, what you would have them do to you. So this sums up the law and the prophets. So those are just a few um, quick Bible verses about um, how we find Jesus. We need God to save us. So um, if you guys want to pray this, pr pray this prayer with me today, if you truly want your life to be changed, if your life is miserable, come for he is light and his burden is easy. And if you have sadness and sorrow and you don't know Jesus, please pray this prayer with me. Um, here we go. Please bow your head and um, close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I pray. Please, Lord, I need you, Jesus. Please come within me, Lord. Save my soul and let me live a life full of you, Jesus. May, you not, may I not be stumped by the fools and the arrogant people. Who try to tell me that God is not real. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you rose from the dead, that you died on that cross, and after three days you rose again. I believe that you are Lord Jesus. I believe that you came to save me from my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe that you have forgiven all of my sins. Come within me, Lord. Make a home in my heart. And may the God of this heaven, and may the God of this entire universe and beyond, Save me. In the Lord Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for me tonight, um, comment, in the sec comment in the comment section. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. And um, if you have any requests or prayer requests or um, things, because I want to help all those who are in sin or um, who are struggling to live a Christian life, even though they claim Christ, to uh, comment down in the section, and I will try my best to respond to all of them. See you guys later.
and um, God be with you all.